Ladies and gentlemen, on the line, we have KD. What up, KD? Baby! I remember a couple of times me and Cube getting up the bus. We like in the eighth grade, getting up the bus, and some A Trace pull up on us. Like, where y'all from? See, Boosie came through, man, and played. Not only was he, not only did he appear on a couple of my songs, he actually played bass on like half of my album. Um, what do you remember about the whole East Coast, West Coast war? I opened up for Cube one night and I'm doing my thing and I can see a couple of cats, you know, saying, doing, doing, saying they little East Coast stuff and fuck West Coast or whatever, whatever. Standing on stage behind Cube, man, I'm looking in the audience, man, all of a sudden I just see this bottle just come and it's like it was in slow motion, just. Yeah. And Cube rapping. And, and 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 you can look at this dude to this day and look up under his eye. I can't remember if it's left or his right eye, but he got a dark mark up in his eye. The bottle plucked him right in his eye, up up, up and split it and split it right up, you know, right up above his cheek. It really had us on edge about touring. You know, what I'm saying especially when especially when we had to go to New York. Get into hip hop and um, specifically, how did um, you, Jinx, and Cube all come together? Uh, <laughs> funny. Uh, I I never I never really thought about getting into hip hop. You know, it was a uh, really Cube who pulled me in. Uh, me and Cube ended up going to uh, we stayed in the same area. I didn't really know him before we went to we got bused in junior high school to uh to a school out in the valley. You know, all white all white community. You know, we got bused out there. Uh, seventh grade. You know, I didn't really too much know him or mess with him. But in the eighth grade, we figured out that we had a, a couple of classes together, and he was like, "Oh, you to do the ride on my bus." So we started clicking up in the classes, and uh, we just clicked from there, man, and uh, became cool friends. And uh, he was really a, a, a real big fan of Ice-T. And uh, he said, listen to Ice-T a lot, man. And uh, you know, one day in his, his, uh, his uh, type, he had a typing class and he came out. He's like, man, Katie, I wrote this rap. I'm like, what are you gonna rap? And he spit it to me and it was fire. I'm like, his first rap, I'm like, bruh. He's like, man, we should start a group. I'm like, start a group? I'm like, man, all right. He's like, man, we should start a group. Maybe you know we got Jinx. And Jinx was, you know, as everybody know, Dr. Dre's cousin. You know, Jinx had a little, he asked me equipment, you know, he stayed on the street for my Cube. So we was like, man, we just went down to Jinx's house and put it together, man. We used to go in his garage and do a little rehearsals. And next thing you know, we present some stuff to Dre. And the next thing you know, we performing out of Compton at like the old Skateland Dudos. And that's where it all started from, man. That was the beginning. Yeah, Dudos, man. Um, I was just talking with Alonzo about that. He just retired. Um, oh, yeah. 40 something yeah. years, man, of, of, of being yeah. up there. Um, explain what it was like, um, you know what I'm saying, because hip hop was fairly new, especially on the West Coast, you know, explain what it was like, uh, you know, back then, uh, mainly releasing, the, the process of releasing an album and actually getting an album on print, like how expensive it was and, and, and that <laughs> Yeah, it was way different than it is now, man. The whole process, I mean, if you, if, if, if you got on wise, bro, you was, you, you was special, you know what I'm saying, to hear your stuff on the radio was special, to see your face on the on the on the tape cover you know what i'm saying was special i mean like now it don't really mean that everybody got it but uh i mean just just even even like how cash is giving away beats now back in the days bro you had to like even if you even if you was a nobody you got your beats you got paid at least 37 30 3500 for, for for a beat if you was a new cat you know what i'm saying a new cat like you, you didn't have to have a name but if you had a beat the minimum price you would get was 3500 you know what I'm saying? Now, cat, you get you, 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 free beats all day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, studio time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it wasn't too many in-house studios like it is now. You can just open up a laptop, man. You got your computer. Mm -hmm. Back then, we had to actually go to a, you know what I'm saying? A, a credible studio with some good sound to make a cool little record. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the whole process, man, was a lot more deeper and in, 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 crazier than it is now it's, it's it's easy but you can like i say pull up your laptop man and download a download a beat they got fruity loops and all that man hey get your little microphone plug it in you got a little studio right there mm. so the process is way easier than it is i mean than it was back in the days <laughs> we actually um which which came first we had stereo crew first which is funny is because uh we actually got signed to epic records we actually got signed to epic records and put out a song called she's a skag on 12 inch mm -hmm which actually got played in the Michael Jackson, I think I'm bad video. You know, the one with Wesley Snipes acting in, in the it. the subway and shit? Man, in the beginning, if, you, if you're listening in the beginning, I think they was in the, in, the, in the room, you can hit in the background, hit a little bit. And, and, and my part is the one that's playing in the background. I'm like, whoa. And me and Q was watching it. When they premiered the video, me and Q was at my house watching it. We watching the premiere of the video, and we, and, and we hear the beat come on. You know, it's a, it's a distinctive beat. Damn, that's funny, dude. That's hilarious, yeah, yeah. yo. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a distinctive beat. So we heard the beat. We like we looked at each other, 
And next thing you know, and, and very faintly, you can hear my voice rapping. We're like, what? They playing our song. But back then, it was because, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we was the lowest group on, on Epic. And they probably was like looking for a song. They could a song they can play in the background, they ain't gotta play nobody. Yeah. <laughs> so they like, oh, they go, well, just just that one, no, play play that one. Uh, dude, that's but hey, but I mean, we were stoked though. We like, man, our song was in Michael Jackson yeah. bad video. So, you know, that was yeah. a cool, that was a cool little situation. But then right after that, we uh we scrapped Stereo Crew and then we changed we changed our name to CIA, uh, which was you know stood for Criminals in Action, but Crew in Action at first, and then we changed to Criminals in Action. Uh, signed to Lonzo, distinctly with, with Lonzo with uh, with, with uh, Cool Cut Records, and uh, we we put out that little uh, that little EP with the three songs on it, and, and that was it. We was out there sounding like the Beastie Boys, man, yelling and screaming. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> now, um, let, let's kind of keep it on NWA um, a little bit because um, I saw a credit and I wasn't sure. I don't remember this, but were you on Panic Zone? No, nah, no, nah, I okay. wouldn't know. So. Wikipedia, nah. man, don't no, man. Wikipedia. Anybody out there who thinks Wikipedia is gold? You know how many times rappers have called me out on Wikipedia? Don't quote Wikipedia. That's the last time yeah. I quote Wikipedia. Well, for, Cause from what I what I from what I know about Wikipedia, I think anybody can go in there and add anything on yep. Wikipedia. Yep. That's yeah. Exactly so right. That's what, you yeah. probably coughed in the background or something like that, and they were like, oh, you're shit. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh yeah, oh yeah, no doubt." But um, did you have any relations with with uh, you know, any of the other guys, uh, specifically God Bless the Dead, uh, Easy E, and um. Dr. Dre. Oh yeah, those are my dudes. Yeah, no doubt, those are my dudes. Especially Dre, man. Dre, man, that's my, that's my guy. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't run into him that much, but uh, yeah. I mean, when when I when you know we do see each other, it's all love. Mm -hmm. It's all love. Yeah. Any good uh, Easy E stories? I'm sorry. Say it again. Any good Easy E stories? Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that won't get anybody in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that did. I mean, you know, me, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hang with Easy too much. I didn't hang with him too much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I only got a couple of stories, man, <laughs> about Easy. Yeah. And, I, and, yeah, and 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 you know, I don't, I don't know yeah, if I want to tell it over yet. Yeah, 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 man. It's all I mean, good, baby. I, I, you know, maybe once, maybe when we got the phone, I can tell you one of them. You know, one that's like kind of little crazy stuff. But I, 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 I really don't want to put that out on the air. Bro. It's all gravy, man. It's all gravy, dude. He's one of the best, man. Definitely one of the dudes who got me interested in hip hop. I mean, I, I, one thing about I me, mean, people probably knew this though about him, man. I, one thing about Easy when he was uh when he was recording, the, that he, the, them glasses he wore, he wore all the time. He would even wear them when he's recording in, in the booth. Is because he would tell everybody to turn the lights out and people put his glasses on because. He didn't like to look at nobody when he was recording. He did not like to look at nobody when he was recording. So he would put his low song and they would cut the lights out and then he would do his thing. Okay, okay. Interesting. Love that. And he, you know, he didn't he didn't want to be a rapper in the beginning. He didn't want to be a rapper. He didn't like his voice. Dre is the one who convinced him, like, bro, yes, your voice is tight. People are gonna love your voice, but he didn't he didn't like it and he didn't want to be a rapper. I mean, I really never even felt that I even had good rapper skills. In the beginning, in the CIA, you know, in the CIA days. Most of those lyrics Q wrote. Q wrote a lot of those lyrics for me and Jinx. Mm. So, in the beginning, I worked for Street Knowledge Records. I didn't, I, I didn't rap. I, you know, after we stopped the, the, the stereo crew in CIA and Q left NWA and formed Street Knowledge or whatever, I came in. I worked for Street Knowledge. I was an A and R, and I, you know, I started seeing you know Yo Yo and Cam and the Lynch Mob and everybody come up, and you know, I was like, wait a minute, I started rapping. Cube. It's like, I'm sitting in this office, I'm these dudes touring, and so I'm like, man, I had to put Q in my office, man, like, Q, man, you know, hey, man, what's up, man, you know, I'm gonna, you know, oh, you wanna rap, you know, I'm like, man, what's happening, and when I said that, it was like, his eyes lit up, and he like, man, the next day, we, man, we was in it, we in there coming up with ideals, because he knew, me, I wasn't on the gangster tip, me, I was all, when we was growing up, he already knew, I was all about the ladies, I was all on the, I was on the player tip, so, we already knew what which way we was going with it. We was going to player tip totally. Ain't no wasn't nothing gangster about me, bro. I ain't no G. I ain't no I ain't out of crip walking. I ain't you know, none of that. I was none of that, bro. I was strictly about the lay. I ain't trying to fight you on I mean I will if I have to, but mm -hmm. I ain't trying to fight, bro. I mean I'm not man, I'm just trying to get money and make and, and get with these women. Yep. So that was my thing. So when it came time to do my album, Cube, only thing Cube used to mostly rap about was the gangster stuff. So when it came to talking about this player and pimp stuff, oh man, we had a ball, bro. We went in there, man, and <laughs> just start cooking up, cooking up all kind of stuff. And he knew that Boosie was a, was a, was one of my favorite cats. He hit up Boosie. Boosie came through, man, and played. Not only was he, not only did he appear on a couple of my songs, 
he actually played bass on like half of my album. Damn. Bernie Bernie Worrell played the mini moog and in, 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 in keys on about about the same amount of tracks. So I had the parliament aspect on half of my album just with them two. You know what I'm saying? So it was just man, it was just a beautiful thing, man. We would come in the studio with nothing. I mean, I wouldn't have no lyrics, we wouldn't have no beat. He would come in, he'll put the bottom beat down, we'd call in a bass player, or we already had Boosie there. We you know, DJ come in and scratch some stuff, and I'd be in another room, you know what I'm saying, jotting my lyrics down, man. And we up, and that's how we came in with Thought I Saw Pussycat. Like, like I swear, man, we came in with nothing. We didn't have nothing. Dude came in, put the bottom beat down, came up with a bass line, put the scratches in, got the girls come in to sing it. Matter of fact, the girls was the, the uh, what was the girls called? From the, the, the Brides of Funkenstein, from the Funkadelic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they they came in and, 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 and sung the Thought I Saw Pussycat thing for, man, I came in with my, li- my lyrics and, psh, Within an hour, hour and a half, man, we had a tight ass song. Mm. So it was, it was, it was, it was just a cool, a cool time because Q was feeling it, you know what I'm saying? So he was really in tune with, he would come in the middle of the night with ideals. Or, what you think about this, KD? Or, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was just, I don't know, man, it was just, it was just a fun time, man. It was, we, we was touring, making money. And everything was just lovely, man. Everything was just lovely. So it wasn't no stressing, man. We was just, I don't know. It was just a good time, man. It was just a good man, time. That's dope. There's one thing that stood out, and I didn't catch it until years later after the album came out, and until unfortunately we lost this person. But you gave a shout out to Biggie Smalls, right? <laughs> okay, that's okay. All right. Yeah. Now, just, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did. Mm-hmm. But to keep it real, I wasn't talking about that Biggie Smalls. Shoot me, give me the info. What, who are you talking about? Is it a, is there a gangster that was named Biggie Smalls in New York? Actually, remember you you, you remember the Biggie Smalls in uh, oh, is it the King of New York the... or something? No, 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 no. Old school movie, old school movie. Uh, was it Let's Do It Again or Uptown Saturday Night? I can't remember which one. Okay, but it was a Biggie Smalls and and it was a player, a pair player in in, in the movie in that movie. Yeah, so it's funny because everybody thought that I was talking about that Biggie Smalls. East Coast, West Coast war. Wow. <laughs> Crazy time, man. Yeah. Crazy time, man. Yeah. It, 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 it really had us it really had us on edge about touring. You know what I'm saying? Especially when especially when we had to go to New York. Mm-hmm. I mean we, we, weren't, we weren't scared, but we just knew, all right, bro, being your P's and Q's, tighten up. You know, we're going to the East Coast. We know this beef is going on. Tighten up. So it would be tension. It would be a little tension because we would, you know, we would be on our P's and Q's up there making sure everything go cool. Um, yeah. Horrible time. I did, yeah, it, it, was, it was horrible, man. But at the time, we, we stood firm on what we believed. And we believed that the West, the East Coast didn't show us no respect. So we was like, fuck y'all. And we and we stood on that. And we was riding with that. Like, like for real, by any means. We was like, you know, hey. Because we really felt disrespected. We felt like they didn't give us our love like we gave them. We gave them their love. So, yeah, we it was it was it was it was real. It wasn't nothing fake about that, man. It was really real, man. We hey, it, I remember being in New York at times, man, and it just the feeling, bro, it just wasn't a cool feeling. Mm. I mean, we still went out there and did our thing, but it just wasn't a cool feeling, you know. Yeah. And I, I even remember performing on a couple of East Coast cities and just not really getting the full love. You know, what I'm saying we was in Connecticut one time, man. Dudes just wasn't really giving us giving us the love, you know what I'm saying? They was some people were, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I opened up for Q one night and I'm doing my thing and I can see a couple of cats, you know what I'm saying, doing they do, saying they little East Coast stuff and fuck West Coast or whatever, whatever. So I go back I go backstage and then Q come out and then I'm I'm the hype man with him for, you know, a couple of things a couple of times and now the same dudes that was giving me bullshit, now they all, you know, they now they into the show. So I'm like, oh you God. And so y'all didn't know who I was, so now y'all like, oh yeah, West Coast now Q out here. Whatever, whatever. But still, in the midst of that, some other cats still wasn't like you know, what I'm saying wasn't wasn't digging the show too much, or, or maybe they was. But I know from standing on stage behind Q, man, I'm looking in the audience, man. I was I see the bottle just come, and it's like it was in slow motion, just yeah. and Q rapping, and, and 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 you can look at this dude to this day and look up under his eye. I can't remember if his left or his right eye, but he had a dark mark up in his eye. The bottle plucked him right in his eye, up up, up and split it and split it right up, you know, right up above his cheek. Damn. The dude, he kind of like, you know, stumbled a little bit, you know, just like, you know, buckled just for a minute, but he kept rapping. The dude kept kept going. I think he, gra- I think he grabbed a towel or whatever and put it on and he kept, he kept rapping. But right after the song was over, we rushed to the, you know, we rushed, we rushed him backstage because, you know, the backstage yeah. door is right on the stage. And uh, 
it was crazy the way that that setup was because the only way out was back through the stage. And when he when he left the stage, the crowd got ruling. You know, they got I mean, they got out of control. Man, they started throwing bottles at the door, busting up the you know, saying trying to bam on the door to get to us. Damn, it was man. a crazy night, man. It was a crazy night, man. Mm. It was crazy. So yeah, that little West Coast East Coast stuff, man. That shit was real. Your thoughts on on the whole Nipsey Hustle situation? Bro, sad situation. I was just gonna do watching a little bit of the. Uh, Mem uh, a little bit of the, 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 the procession just a little while ago. They showing little clips of the, of the memorial. I didn't, I didn't really see too much of the memorial service. I saw a couple of clips here and there. And uh, yeah, bro. I mean, I, I, ain't, I can't lie. I shed, I, I shed a tear too a few times. You know, a few times, bro. I mean, it's just, it's sad, man, because it took away our brother. We just, you, you, you don't, you don't know what his potential was. You don't know what this brother would have became, man. He had, he had so much potential, man, and. He was moving in the right, the right direction, man. Creating jobs and and and, and better in this community, and just for him to go out the way he went out, man, it was just you know, what I'm saying, just a, a a sad situation, man. It's just this world is pretty messed up, bro. Like yeah. really, it, it, the world is really messed up. We got we got some messed up things going on in this world, man. And I don't know, bro. I don't. I I, I just really don't know, man. It's it, but. It seems like the like his father said, but which one of my buddies said before I heard his father say it. It seemed like the dude was on on this earth to serve a purpose, and it seemed like he served his purpose because look what's going on. Look what's going on around around right now, man. Yeah, people everybody, everybody yeah. uniting, man. I mean, people talking about they finna continue his legacy. You know, so now I'm willing to bet some of these cats who got money now is gonna step up and start doing some of the things. I ain't gonna say a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's gonna be a few that's gonna step up. That's gonna do what he did, man. That's gonna be up here buying buy property, creating jobs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, you know, I'm. I don't like to look at like death has been a good thing, but I think in this situation it kind of, it, mm. it, it kind of will be, man. Because yeah. you got you got Bloods and Crips out here uniting mm. on some serious ish, like not not like back in '92. I mean, yeah, it was it was it was it was some it was some truth in the '92. But it just feels a little different now. Does it? You okay, because because I was very young at that time. I mean, I was like thirteen or something like that. I think you're about ten years older than me. Um, wh what are the differences between you know that time and, and this time? Uh, it's, I don't think it's anything that I can like pinpoint. I'm just just saying it's the way it feels from what I'm seeing. Now, true enough, we didn't have no social media back then, mm -hmm. and and then of course, yeah, I'm I'm seeing a lot of love from social media. So maybe that's why I'm I'm, I'm feeling that way. Mm -hmm. But it just, like I said, it's just, it's just a feeling, just the way it feels, man. Just from what I'm seeing and what I'm, what I'm hearing from people, and just the many people out here that's that's pushing it. Uh, back then, I heard it. I heard, I heard people saying peace, peace. You've seen it on pictures. You've seen it on interviews. But I still saw a lot of these cats like f that, man. I ain't with that. Still, still the next day, still seeing people out here doing a drive by. Still, you know. Right now, you ain't really heard nothing going on, bro. You ain't heard no messed up stuff going on. Nope, no shootings. At least I haven't. I ain't heard no gang violence, nothing going on in this, with, since this dude then got shot, except for the people that, in the retaliation, when, you know, when they was thinking that it was, you know, not thinking, but knowing that that dude did it, and I heard that a couple of his cousins got got killed or whatever. That's what I heard. I don't know for sure. Yeah. It, it's, funny, but, but, it's funny you mentioned that, because at the vigil, there was a shooting, too. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, there was a lady got shot in her back and another one got shot in her elbow. What? Whoa, bro, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you are you sure that they, they they at first they said that it was gunshots and the cops said no it wasn't and then it came back recently because the victims reported it to the cops that they were shot at the vigil and then one had wow. lower back injury and the other one had elbow. So it's kind of weird that the victims and the police are conflicting their stories.